All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, so whether you're in your first week or your second week, I just kind of wanted to dive a little bit more deeper into actual like stomach issues more than what the program talks about. Um, what we're doing with the four week go gut protocol is definitely going to help constipation, diarrhea, and all that fun stuff we uh, don't like to talk about. But let's face it, most people do come across these things um, one time or another. And I mean, myself, I've dealt with it with my one kid. Um, we've been through all of it. So these are just kind of like my tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. I should put like a little disclaimer, like this isn't medical information, but use this at your own discretion. And, you know, if you have a problem, obviously go see your doctor. Um, but these are just a lot of things that um, I found that has worked for me and for other people that I've worked with. Um, but first off, let me just congratulate you guys for still being here. It's kind of like when people like first start a workout re routine or like, you know, New Year's, um, New Year's Day, everyone's like gung ho, or you see like the gym parking lot completely full. And then seven days later, it's like, where the heck did everybody go? Same thing with this. So just like give you guys like a big shout out for still being here for, you know, doing this. Um, it's not easy, right? Um, I think it's simple, but we want quick, right? We want all those quick fixes. Um, so just be proud of yourselves for being here. Even if you like mess up, even if you had a drink, I'm going to have a drink tomorrow. Just going to let you guys know that right out the gate. Um, it's not about being perfect. It's just about um, doing better than the day before, right? Um, and keep your blinders on too. I feel like as we go like week one, week two, week three, you're going to see people share like, I lost 10 pounds. I lost this. I lost that. Da, 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 da. And we can, and that can knock us like right off of our feet, right? Like it sucks the wind out of us because um, it's so easy to compare yourself to other people when you can't, like you don't know where they've been or where they've come from or things like that. So just kind of like stay in your lane, keep your blinders on and just keep on doing what you're doing and trust the process. So this is um, the bristle stool chart. You, we all want to like be in that type four, which is like that normal um, looking poop there. But this is what autumn talks about, I, I really, she like referenced it once. I'm like, no, people like need to know about this stuff even more. It's like super weird to talk about this stuff. Um, but just so you guys know, like where you're at, like you guys can obviously rate yourselves. You don't have to put it in the comment section or anything. Um, but ideally we want to be in type four, you know, four or three, not, you know, you're not too far off, right? Um, so just kind of like have this in mind as you're going through this program and just notice any changes um, that you might see. So first thing um, we'll talk about is constipation because I feel like more people have constipation than diarrhea. Um, so soothe a lot of if you are if you are one of my um, clients, then I added soothe in your um, carts anyways. But Soothe is so good um, for constipation and just in jet, like I've been taking it for, I don't even know at this point, maybe like three or four years, um, just because it's so healing and it has aloe and turmeric, which line the, um, the intestinal walls. So aloe makes it nice and smooth. So things just come right through, not like runny or anything. Um, and then the turmeric is also very healing. So it helps to um, bind. So your, your intestinal walls are only made of one cell thick, like lining around. So if that gets damaged, that's how you get a food allergy because once it's damaged, food particles can get into your bloodstream and then that causes an inflammatory reaction. Um, so we want those, we call them tight junctions of your intestinal cell walls to be like nice and tight. Once they start to get damaged and get open, that's when inflammation and food allergies can happen. So Soothe is gonna help to repair that and keep everything going. So you can do two capsules at dinner. Um, like I said, you can, I've been taking it just for years and years because it's just healthy. It's good for maintenance as well. 
Um, magnesium calm is same thing. I've been um, drinking that for uh, at least like since my first son because I was so scared of everyone saying that you get like hemorrhoids when you're pregnant. I was like, I don't want any hemorrhoids. Um, but our body needs magnesium and we use it up so much. Like you can't overdose on magnesium. So don't be scared. Um, of like doing magnesium calm and putting some magnesium in, um, your bath as well, like your, your body uses it so readily, it's, it's going to be fine. Um, so with magnesium calm, it, I think um, it says to do two tablespoons, and you're going to have diarrhea. Start with a half a tablespoon and um, I'll, I'll share these PowerPoint presentations so you don't have to like write anything down. And then you could just work your way up as your body gets used to it. So that magnesium is just going to draw water into your large intestine so things can go. But like I said, your cells need magnesium for so many different things. So it's really good to do. Um, you could also do it in a bath with the magnesium flakes um, through your skin. It's actually um, more absorbable than drinking it. So that's why I say you can't overdose on this stuff. So you can do it with both. And then if you add baking soda into the bath as well, that's also going to just help absorb that into your body that much more. You can also add um, Georgia. Now, I mean, all three of these or one, two, three, four, like you could do all four of these and be fine. Meaning like you're not gonna get like diarrhea or anything. Um, but Georgia's aloe vera, if you need to want like more aloe vera, you can definitely do that. You can do just like one tablespoon. It tastes like water. You wouldn't even know it's aloe vera, um, but you can take that in the morning. Now, triphala is, I think it's like three or four different fruits, just like in a pill form. That I would start with one pill. And then if you don't get any movement, then you can work your way up. Um, that one, if you take too much, you, you probably would get diarrhea, but then you can just back off to the like the last dose. So say like you took three and that gave you diarrhea, you can just take two and keep that. Um, I would do that for a week if you've been backed up for a little bit um, and take two right before bed with a glass of water for the triphala. And like I said, you can work your way up. Um, charcoal is actually really good um, if you need to bind anything, meaning like for me, like I know like eggs just throw me off like so bad, um, but charcoal can help absorb like anything that we eat um, that causes us a reaction. So that's gonna help to kind of pull and bind any toxins out of our body. And the same thing with the diatomaceous earth. Um, this stuff is not, it's very gritty. It doesn't really taste like anything, um, but you could just put it in a half um, cup of water. And you could actually mix the charcoal and diatomaceous earth in one, in one glass and just kind of take it down, we call it a, a sludgy cocktail because it, it's kind of, like I said, it's not the greatest tasting thing, but hey, when you want to get things moving. And um, I learned this stuff from a, a detox that I did too. It, it binds toxins. So if you, like I said, like if you had something that you know you're going to react to, um, or maybe you were on a heavy dose of like prescription meds for something, um, or maybe you had surgery and you just want to get like all that crap out of your system, that would be really good to do. Um, smooth move tea, I forget. I think it's a traditional medicinal um, tea. It has the smooth move tea, it's called senna. It's a plant that they just put in the, in the tea. Um, you steep it and that will help to get things moving as well. That I would not use if you're pregnant. Um, Triphala, I wouldn't use if you're pregnant. Everything else, um, you're, you're pretty good. I, I get mixed reviews on triphala with breastfeeding. Um, I personally stay away from it. Um, but like everything, like the magnesium soothe aloe vera, charcoal, diatomaceous earth, like that's all good um, if you're breastfeeding or pregnant. Um, and I put this in bold, do not use Miralax or laxatives. You can just Google effects of Miralax and you'll see the like pages and pages of um, side effects from those things and they don't really solve the problem. Um, they're actually going to kill your good bacteria and make the problem worse. So it's kind of like 
yeah, you might go, but you're going to need more and more and more and more. And then your stomach issues are going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Um, and then of course, increase your water intake. You'd be super surprised how dehydration can really cause a lot of these issues. So Rose, I'm sorry, if you like don't have constipation or those issues, do you still take like soothe and some of the other ones? Oh like, yeah, like day regardless. Those things are definitely um, let me, I'll go back. Yeah, like the soothe is great for maintenance, magnesium is great. Um, even the aloe vera is great. Um, you don't like you don't need to do the trifala, the charcoal, or diatomaceous earth or smooth move if there's not like if there's nothing wrong. So the first like four things are just like good um, for health purposes in general, even if you're not constipated. All right, and so the first one through this fine for breastfeeding, right, you said? Oh, yeah, yep. Good question. Um, okay, so diarrhea help. <laughs> Most of the time when you have diarrhea, it's because of something that you ingested or taking that your body is just like, get out of me. Um, and you can actually still be constipated if you have diarrhea, because sometimes it's just, I, I know I'm getting, I don't want to get too graphic, but whatever, we're here to talk about poop, right? Um, and our stomach issues. If you're only going a little bit, even though it's diarrhea, you're still backed up. So a lot of it is kind of like making your own like cocktail, right? Some things are going to work for you. Some things aren't. It's a lot of, um, give and take to see what is going to work for you. So it's really diarrhea is just your body's way of trying to flush something out. And of course, with this, you want to make sure that you are really staying hydrated um, with your body trying to get rid of something too. This, I would definitely say like track what your food journal. I remember in like high school and college, I didn't put two and two together. Like I ate complete crap. I would know every single ba like bathroom like McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, what time they opened, what time they closed, like where I was, because sometimes like my IBS would be that severe. But like I said, I was so young, I didn't put two and two together. And when I went to the doctor, they just gave me a prescription. Um, so track what you're like a food journal, just like, you know, write down what you had, what you're feeling. I believe there is one in, um, in the resources in the four week up protocol that you could just print out. Um, but that will give you a good aha of what food is causing that trigger if that's your problem. Um, you could also try, if this is something that's more chronic, you could also try one teaspoon. It's called psyllium husk. It's just like a, a fiber, but it's not going to bulk you up per se. Um, you can just put that in some water, take it down. Um, and then, like I said, make sure to stay hydrated because you're getting a lot of water going through your system. And then just overall tummy health um, is, I, I've done this and if you have kids, you probably have done this too. It's like the I love you massage. So you're gonna go, I'll stand up for this so you guys can see me. But you wanna, so your colon, your large intestine is like in a U shape, right? So it goes, you have your um, ascendant, ascending colon. So you want to go up like an I and then the L so then it goes over. And then the U is for your descending colon. So this is just going to help. So you can just do this. Just do that. I love. And then the U um, do that for like a minute. You know, you can like put lotion on it or whatever, but I do that. So I'll work out because working out really gets that your, um, intestines are, are a smooth muscle, but that really, so when you work out, it really gets those, you know, things moving. And then after my workout, I'll lay down and I'll just do like a minute of that. I love you massage. And that really just, because there's so many like nooks and crannies in your intestines, that it's really good to kind of like massage that. Um, so eat, whether it's constipation or just for, you know, healthy digestion, it's good to do that massage. Um, oh, let me get this book and I'll give you guys like a Google, um, document with all the links to what I'm talking about tonight, but I don't know where I came across this book. Um, 
it's like really geeky uh, with like a lot of sciencey information, but it's super helpful. It's called Why Isn't My Brain Working? And like Autumn talks about um, our brain, our gut brain connection is just so interconnected. And guess what he talks about in this book the like half the time? Stomach, stomach issues and things like that. Um, and how that is connected to the brain. And if your brain's not working, then your stomach isn't working. So he talked about these really cool tips of things like singing. So it's our vagus nerve. Autumn talks about this as well. It's your vagus nerve that is connecting your, your brain to your stomach, right? So things like singing, gargling, the gag reflex. So just getting like a, um, a doctor's, what do you call it? Not a step, stethoscope, but like a wooden, a wooden thing, or you can use like a spoon. Why can't you think of the word? Um, but like, you don't want to choke yourself. Okay. You just want to like lightly tap there, like tap back, or you can even use your toothbrush to get that gag reflex. But those three things stimulate that vagus nerve, meaning it's, it's kind of like working out your muscle, right? You're working out that vagus nerve to wake up a little bit more. Um, and that's why Autumn calls it, yes, like a popsicle stick. Thank you, Shauna. Um, but that's just like, that's so simple, right? Like we all can do that with that our day. It's not adding anything else on. We can do this all in the, you know, in the car or gargling right before bed. But like I said, it's just going to strengthen that nerve. So it fires correctly and then you're, Stomach's going to work better and do what it's supposed to. Um, things like medication, Advil, prescription drugs, alcohol, all of those things weaken that nerve connection. So this is going to help to stimulate it a little bit more. Um, colonics and enemas. I know people are like, what? Um, there's places all over that do like the, the colonics. I don't know if any of you have been to them. Um, some are where like someone's there with you and they do it. Um, or there's other ones that like, they'll just like put you on the colonic and then it does its thing. Um, it's pretty interesting. Like I said, I've done it before. I haven't done one in a while, but it legit like cleans. It's like a vacuum cleaner for your intestines. Like it really does um, clean you out. And there are like home um, enemas that you can do as well. Coffee enemas are pretty um, big in some like Ayurvedic medicines um, just to like stimulate the um, large intestine to kind of get rid of anything that's been sticking in there for too long. Castor oil packs, I really like these. Um, it's just a hot like pack and you put castor oil like on a um, like on a flannel sheet or something. And I have a link in the Google sheet that I'll share. And you just put the castor oil um, on your right side, right by your liver and right by like your large intestine and put the heat pack right on top. And castor oil is just very soothing. Um, if you are pregnant, ever pregnant, castor oil is like one of those last resorts. If you're like 41 weeks uh, and still pregnant, um, it helps to get rid of things, hence it puts you into labor. But with this, it's just going to help, um, your liver really helps detoxify you. So it's gonna help to detoxify you and kind of get things moving, right? Like if we're not able to get what's in us, like if we're not able to go to the bathroom or get rid of all those toxins, then that's just going to build up. It's gonna be a burden on our liver. And then that's where we get a lot of our health issues starting from. And it becomes a domino effect. Um, the ion gut support, I just threw mine out because I needed more or I used it all and I just ordered more, but um, that's going to be our prize for this week for the nightly check-in. So if you check in for every single night this week, I'm gonna put you in a raffle to win the ion gut support. So the ion gut support is, um, it, it's, it, it's actually dirt, it's the craziest thing. Um, but the whole science behind it, it's just like, it looks like, it really looks like dirt. It's like water with like dirt, but doesn't taste like it, so don't worry. Um, but it has all of these um, like minerals and plants, plant-based ions 
in this, um, like I just take like a teaspoon every time, like before I eat every single time. But what it does is it actually helps those tight junctions like I was talking about in your intestines. So just like your cell lining in your stomach close and it helps to keep it strong and tight so it doesn't get destroyed and then create um, any damage to it. So our like farming um, industry, you know, for the past like 30, 40 years have really, destroyed our soil and in our soil is where our food gets all the nutrition from. So if our soil is depleted of nutrition, that means our food's going to be depleted of nutrition. And they saw that what was being depleted was these, the, the dirt kind of like minerals um, that really help to keep our stomach healthy. So um, I've been drinking that for, I would say maybe like a year or two. I've heard of it a while ago and I just didn't um, do it. And then um, once I was trying to get pregnant for the second time, I, I did it every single day. And I think it definitely makes a difference. And then some other things that you can think about too is just um, massage, acupuncture, pelvic floor, PT, all of those things. Um, I think next week and week two, Autumn's going to talk about stress, how much of a role that plays. So if you can decrease your stress, whether it's with massage, acupuncture, um, meditation, pelvic floor PT is just amazing. Um, our, one of our, um, one of the coaches on our team, she went to her friend um, from high school who's a pelvic floor PT. And now like the entire team goes to this lady because she's that good. Um, Cause she can sense or, or not sense. She can physically feel um, if you're backed up and she can manually not like release it that way. <laughs> but it, like, she'll, she could just like press on my stomach like here. And then I'll hear my stomach go. Burr, burr, burr. It's like the craziest thing. Um, Anyways, going off on a tangent and just some ideas for you guys throwing it out there just for overall health as well. Oh, tongue depressor. Yeah, Shauna. <laughs> All right. And here are some just gas and bloating tips um, <clears throat> that I've, again, learned along my journey is separate the times when you have your starches and your fruits. So fruit is very highly, um, it, it wants to go, go through your system really quickly. So a lot of times if you have a fruit and a starch together, it kind of competes in your stomach to be digested first. And when that happens, they actually sit in your gut for longer. And that's when they ferment, meaning it creates like gas and bloating and those sorts of things. Um, and then you just have like poor digestion. So that's why I always put an avocado in my shake. And I think I already mentioned this um, like two weeks ago when I posted my Shakeology, like how I make my shake video. Um, but that's the reason I don't put like a banana or fruit in my shake. I keep it separate. So things like um, if you were to do like we'll just go with peanut butter and jelly. That's the first thing that comes in my head. Um, the bread would be the starch and then the jelly would be the fruit. That could be um, hard for people to digest because those two things are competing. So just think of like starches are yellow, pretty much like yellows and then fruits are purples. Just don't put them together. See if that works, right? Like if you're like, Rose is really freaking crazy. Um, hey, you gotta see it. If <laughs> it works for you, cool. Um, if it's not an issue, then now, you know, it's not an issue, right? But just something, um, for you to put in the back of your mind. Um, also don't have two proteins at the same time, same kind of concept, your body, even though, um, like we have digestive enzymes to break those things down, your body can't break down two different types of protein at the same time. You're just going to have really poor digestion. So just think of like a meal like surf and turf after it, like, how do you feel? Do you feel bogged down? Do you feel bloated? Do you have gas? Do you just feel like super uncomfortable for like five hours after you had that? So just kind of be aware of those situations. Um, I already talked about that. And this is one that, again, 
try and see if it works for you. Don't drink while you're eating. You can, you know, drink like 10 minutes before and then drink, I would say like an hour after. Reason being um, is it's going to dilute your stomach acid and you need your stomach acid to activate your digestive enzymes. Your digestive enzymes break down the food. So if you are drinking some sort of, we'll say water or wine or whatever type of liquid, you're diluting your stomach acids, that's not activating your digestive enzymes, then your food's not getting broken down. Again, try it, see if it makes a difference. If not, then, hey, at least you tried it. And then always try having room temperature um, or warmer water, just in general. I know it's kind of hard with the shake. Um, I like in the summertime, I just, I'm just like, it's freaking hot. I'm putting ice in the wintertime. I don't put as much just because it's more, it's, um, you can Google this too. It's like a, a Chinese medicine thing is like, you don't want to have any cold thing, um, any cold liquid or even really food, like have your food at least like room temperature. I love ice cream. Don't get me wrong. Um, as much as you can have your food like room temperature or warmer because your intestines really are near things like our ovaries, which need heat. Um, again, just Google it for Chinese medicine, but it needs that heat to um, just work properly. If it's cold and it's like next to our ovaries and our eggs and all that stuff. It, it's, it's real, I know it's wacky, um, but just Google it and you'll um, see all that information. And then, like I said in the beginning, keep your blinders on. Don't look at what other people are doing with this because you don't know what their diet was before. And you have to be honest with yourself too, right? Like we're only um, in week one, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. A baby was, wasn't built in a month or two or three, it's, you know, nine months. Like, so if you're expecting like crazy results within the first week, you have to check yourself and check your expectations at the door and just be realistic with yourself, right? Like our bodies are going through a lot, especially, I mean, even three, even in the fourth week, like it's, you gotta ask yourself, like how long have you been living? Um, with your previous nutrition plan or with your previous um, allergy. So just give your body some grace, give it some time um, so that you're not like stressing yourself out, trying to like be somewhere you think you should be, right? Like we always, you know, expect, I forget that saying, but expectations just set you up for failure because usually our expectations are like, we want to quick fast and right now. Um, and that is, that never really happens to anything that is, you know, worth it. So just stick with it. Um, and um, one other side note too, is with any probiotics, so there's um, pre and probiotics in your Shakeology. Um, if you never had those or are just introducing it for the first time, or even with the fermented foods, let me just get a swig of water. Um, if you're doing like the um, fermented blueberries or fermented um, pickles or sauerkraut, think of your um, gut microbiome. So your gut microbiome is those good and bad bacteria. There's only so many what we call like parking spaces. There's only so much space for that gut microbiome. And it's like billions, right? Like billions of these little microbiomes are in our gut. So when we're adding those good probiotics, you might almost get like a detox effect because it's pushing out that bad bacteria because there's only so many parking spaces for these bacteria to be. So it's pushing that stuff out. So um, if in the first week you do have maybe a little, you know, some detox symptoms like headache or um, you are running to the bathroom, that might just be, I mean, you shouldn't get it too much on this program, but think of it almost, I know it's kind of weird, but you almost want to think of it as a good thing. Like your body is um, adjusting to what you're giving to it and getting rid of the bad stuff that was hanging out for so long. So just be 
aware of that as well. Yep. And then with your food allergies too, why it's super track, ugh, super important to log and track. I know like in our minds, we think like, oh, I know what I had. I know what I had. Um, but it can almost take up to 72 hours and sometimes plus um, to see a reaction from a food you ate. So for example, if you went to um, a restaurant and you had, I don't know, gluten-free pancakes or something, we think like, okay, if that's going to bother me. It's going to happen that day. No, not necessarily. And that's why sometimes figuring these things out is a little bit tricky because it takes up to 72 hours um, to really notice. So if you're going to, um, you know, when we talk about in four weeks about reintroducing some things, you want to do it super slowly so you can really um, pinpoint and figure out what those triggers are. But if you're going through, you know, within these four weeks now and you're having a food and you're like, oh, I don't know if that bothered me or not, just have it once. Like, for example, um, you know, Autumn says, yes, you can have eggs. I'm saying, no, you really shouldn't have eggs. But say you have eggs on a Monday, give it at least until like Thursday or Friday until you have it again or reintroduce anything else new or different. So you can see if it was really the eggs that was causing the problem. Oh, and if you are having any, um, or you need any help with tracking your food or seeing if this food is a problem, you can always track it. You can message me, you can post it in the group. I'm really good at kind of pinpointing um, some of the, the more highly um, allergic foods that Autumn didn't talk about. Um, so you can definitely track it and post or message me, or we could just look at it for next week's call as well. Um, and this one I found in this book when I was just like re um, going through it again for this PowerPoint presentation is um, that up to 90% of individuals who suffer from any form of chronic joint pain are sensitive um, to nightshades. And you're probably like, Rose, what are you talking about? And when I did this PowerPoint presentation for the first um, group of people who did this program, one of my coaches was like, Rose, you like went a little bit too far with the nightshade thing. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give people the information. And if you take, you know, one little nugget from tonight, whether it's like singing in your car or gargling, cool. If somebody wants to know more about nightshades, here, we're gonna talk about it. Um, so nightshades belong to, uh, um, family of plants um, and they consider them weeds. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that because I'm totally going to botch it. Um, but these group of plants of nightshades are just known to be more pro-inflammatory, just causes inflammation. Um, and there's even like crazy people. I don't want to say crazy people because they have research backing some of it up. There's research to back up a lot of things. Um, but I get this email from this guy who just eats meat. And I forget what he calls himself. I think it's like the, the man or the meat eater, something like that. But he his thing is like all plants have this pro-inflammatory um, self-defense mechanism. Um, so he doesn't eat any plants. It's like the craziest thing. I'm not going that far at all. Obviously, we're trying to get 30 plants in a week. But these might be some... Um, plants that you can see if you're sensitive or allergic to them, um, take them out and, and see. But here are the major ones. Tomatoes, white potatoes, eggplants, peppers, um, tobacco. So I would say like those four things are really like the highest ones that tomatoes, white potatoes, eggplant, peppers, and tobacco. So five things. Um, the other ones do, but I feel like, I don't know who really eats okra. Um, uh, not too many people. Um, so if you're like, oh my God, I have tomatoes every single day and nothing has changed, try and take tomatoes out. Or the same thing with peppers. I eat peppers every single day and nothing has changed for me yet. Try and remove peppers. Um, Everything, like I keep saying, it's going to affect people differently. You have to see if it works for you. If it does, 
great. If not, at least you try this and you can try the next thing. And again, I'll be sharing this PowerPoint presentation. All right, I did this in like 30 minutes. I'm super proud of myself because um, I can go off on tangents. But do you guys have any questions or anything that you want to add? You can um, unmute yourselves or just comment in the chat. All right. Well, thanks everyone for showing up. I'll put all this stuff in the group page and um, I'll let you guys know I'm like still transitioning the baby with like nap, um, nap and bedtime. So it should still be 830 um, next week for our call, but I'll post it in the group. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.